Oh shit. It's back. Episode 100. Bitching about movies. Wow. Did a hundred of these things. Thanks to all the longtime listeners for hanging in there and being so patient. I hope when this popped up on your podcast feed, you were pleasantly surprised and you weren't like, oh shit, I forgot to delete that. If you're new to the show, welcome. Welcome aboard. Um, You might be asking, what is this? I know it's a movie podcast. Well, what I try to do each week is to discuss the latest trailers and movie news, give my opinion. And the big portion of the show is going to be what to watch this week, WTWTW, as the kids call it, where I humbly suggest what TV shows and movies I think you should check out on all the big streaming services, and sometimes what you can rent from your red box, or if you are a lucky, lucky bastard and have a video store and can rent physical discs still. If you do, I kind of hate you, but I'll recommend those as well. And of course, we will go over what the theatrical releases are for the upcoming week and give you our picks on what we think you should watch. We'll follow that up with uh, Seen It, which is what it sounds like. And this week it's going to be a loaded section, which is all the stuff of interest that I've watched before the since the last episode. And finally, there'll be a topic of the show, and that will be with a guest, reoccurring guest each week. We'll have, you know, new faces, new voices, I should say, on the podcast and some familiar ones as well. So let's start it off with thoughts and trailers. Take them to church. Okay, three trailers to talk about this week. First up, Rocket Man. Look, almost anything is going to look good when Rocket Man is behind being played behind it. Um, also, my guess is the filmmakers have never heard of Trailer Park Boys because Taron Edgerton looks like fucking bubbles. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. That being said, I'm optimistic about this one. I'm a sucker for the music biopics. Um, you know, I'm going to go see the Freddie Mercury one. I'm probably going to go see this one, but the, why all the sunglasses? He looks like fucking bubbles, man. Up next, Holmes and Watson. This is the Sherlock Holmes adaptation starring Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. Check the trailer out. If you laugh during it, I think this is the movie for you. Yes, it looks dumb as fuck in a good way. I hope. Um, don't expect Step Brothers. You should never do that. You're going to be set up for disappointment. But maybe we should check this out. Maybe we shouldn't be sober when we do. I don't know. I'm optimistic about that one, too. Finally, on the trailer front, Dark Phoenix. Oh, meh. I don't know. I don't know. It, it could be something. There was parts in the trailer where I, I was could see how this could be an interesting movie. And there are parts in the trailer where Sophie Turner kind of had me convinced she was Jean Grey. I don't know if she's the right choice, but why are they holding this one back? It, I don't know. The trailer itself was such a fucking tease, and now they're going to push it back from February to like a spring release. Not a good sign. Also, I, I, I think I missed the last two X-Men movies. I don't think I care about them anymore. Do you guys care about those movies? I don't know. You have to let me know. I don't think anyone really cares about the X-Men movies anymore. Finally, Movie Pass is back in the news. And if you've listened to this show before, you know that we've talked about Movie Pass almost every episode. It was the reason why we got access to a bunch of movies as they came out and it did help us out with our review segments. So I'm grateful for that. But now Movie Pass is apparently renewing customer accounts who've canceled. And setting them up with their new $9.95 a month plan. So if you had MoviePass and you canceled, you may want to check your email. You may want to check your spam because, surprise, you might be signed back up for fucking MoviePass without knowing it. And apparently, in their terms and conditions, they feel like they're allowed to do this. And legally being allowed to do it is one thing. But what kind of relationship are you starting with your customer if you're surprising them with a membership?
now it's time for the WTWTW. What to watch this week for October 1st through October 7th. I'm going to do it a little bit differently now. I'm going to break it up in four parts. Part one is going to be binge worthy. So part one is what it sounds like. It's TV shows. It's mini series. Things that I think are worth checking out. And if you're looking for something to binge, I'm going to recommend these. We're going to start with Netflix. Um, Big Mouth Season 2 comes out Friday, October 5th. It's a story of teenage friends that uh, find their lives upended by the horrors and wonders of puberty. Um, Honestly, every friend that I've talked to that's seen this show loves it. I don't know why I haven't watched it yet. It's loaded with comedians I love. Nick Kroll, John Mulaney, Jason Manzukis, Jenny Slate. I love Jenny Slate. Um, So yeah, it's on my short list of TV shows that I'm willing to start. Up next, uh, for all you hipsters out there, there's this office-inspired Korean mockumentary called YG, Future Strategy Office. If that uh, description sounds interesting to you, watch the trailer. This one's also going to be out on Friday, October 5th. Then you can watch the show. You can impress your friends with this cool thing you've heard of and they haven't. And you can thank me for it. Over on Amazon Prime, uh, I don't know if this is the debut, but Spaced, the excellent TV show, which is only two seasons, like 14 episodes. This is where Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg forge their creative relationship. Nick Frost and Simon Pegg forge their comedic chemistry. Um, Spaced is about like the adventures of all these different weirdos that live in an apartment complex. Plenty of sci-fi references that I honestly don't get, but I love this show anyway. Check it out if you haven't, and if you have seen it i'm sure it's been a long time since you visited it and you should probably check it out again second part is going to be in case you missed it so i'm gonna give you some older things that i think you should check out if you haven't on netflix this week they have two monty python features the meaning of life which is fantastic if you're unfamiliar with monty python oh my god you're just you're in store for something awesome these guys are like the beatles of comedy so the meaning of life i would highly recommend and if you dig that one i would check out the life of brian it's also fantastic i i like the holy grail more so meaning of life and holy grail are like 1a 1b for me in the monty python movies life of brian's third but it's still great over on amazon prime you have carrie which i assume they're talking about the original child's play another great horror movie the original before they fuck that one up election which is a great dark comedy with reese witherspoon and matthew broderick two of them in like some of the probably the best roles they've played if not the top three it's just great if you like reese witherspoon check out election it's unlike any other role she's played since and and at that time full metal jacket if you're just looking for a great fucked up movie some stanley kubrick if you're a david fincher fan mulholland drive these are all on amazon prime again raging bull is is out this month it's fantastic martin scorsese boxing movie with robert de niro and joe pesci also robocop and the sequels i don't remember seeing the sequels but robocop is fucking awesome so you can check those out Part three of the WTWTW is now streaming, which are streaming debuts of films that came out earlier this year. We're going to start with HBO Go. Game Night is going to be out Tuesday the 2nd. That's a very funny comedy. I enjoyed it a lot about a group of friends who meet regularly for a game night and they find themselves entangled like in a real life murder mystery uh, style situation when the shady brother of Jason Bateman's character is seemingly kidnapped by some dangerous gangsters. Um, this movie's filled with twists. It's it's definitely much better the first time you see it, but uh, it still holds up. But once you know the twists and turns, you know, the first time you see it, it's fantastic. It's 100% inspired by David Fincher's The Game which is another great movie. If you haven't seen that, probably on the short list of the most underrated movies of the, uh, was that 19, late 1990s, early 2000s. And, you know, in the end game night, Jason Bateman does his thing. Jesse Plemons nails his role as like the creepy neighbor who can't get over his failed marriage. He's also paranoid that his friends are icing him out of their game nights and social gatherings. But it's it's rachel mcadams who stands out in this the most and it's her fucking movie and she reminds us how effortlessly hilarious she is 
please, please, please put her back in more comedies. She's fantastic. On Amazon Prime, this interesting movie from A24 called Never Going Back. Uh, A24 is a studio that, in my opinion, are as reliable as any in the past couple years. So when they have a new feature, I'm, I'm just going to check it out blindly. But I did watch a trailer for this one to give you guys more insight. And Never Going Back is about Jesse and Angela, their high school dropouts. They're taking a week off from their job as waitresses to chill at the beach. Um, unfortunately, it's due to a series of ridiculous events, they get robbed, their rents pass due, they're about to get fired, they're broke. Um, they're a week off not going how they planned. So, like I said, I have a lot of faith in A24 and what they're putting out right now. The trailer shows me a story that I think is more concerned with, with telling a good good story a movie that's more concerned with telling a good story than being raunchy or making jokes now i think those things are going to show up too in the story but i need the characters in movies like these to act like relatable human beings and that seems to be what you're getting with this one also on amazon prime also on a24 is uh, a prayer before dawn and these are both on tuesday the second Listen, I get it. I get it. It feels like there's like a boxing movie every couple of months and you probably only want to see Creed 2 if you watch any boxing movie at all. But if you want to scratch the movie itch, the sports movie itch, this one looks pretty good. This one's based on a true story of an English boxer who's incarcerated in Thailand in one of the toughest prisons in the world, allegedly. That's what the trailer says. It looks believable. Um, he fights in Muay Thai. Muay Thai tournaments to earn his freedom. I, yeah, you can tell it's been a while. I'm having a hard time talking. Not that I don't usually. Anyways, uh, the main character, of course, is going to end up in a situation where he has nothing to live for, you know, except to fight. And yes, the stakes are going to be pretty high. I'm pretty sure his life's on the line from the trailer. Um, but it has a really good look. It's filmed an intelligent trailer in a real past Thai prison with former inmates so they're going for authenticity there it, it can sound like a cheap selling point but check out the trailer it looks dark it looks like well shot you, you catch glimpses of good cam work in the short you know trailer sounds mixing and like the interesting use of color in the trailer like it showed me a lot I kind of got a feel for what this movie's going to be like in a trailer without knowing exactly how it's going to go down if that makes sense um the prisoners the prison it looks fucking intimidating and most importantly joe cole who is in uh, the green room and peaky fucking blinders seems to sell the character in the trailer uh, and it's kind of tough to pull off that this type of character he's like a vulnerable but badass dude and it looks like in the trailer he, he pulls it off so i, I want to check this one out um finally the last section of the wtw wtwtw as the kids call it, and I sometimes correctly pronounce it, is a new release section. And these are going to be originals for the week. Over on Netflix, you know, your favorite podcaster or your least favorite podcaster, the most polarizing man right now on the internet, Joe Rogan. He has his new stand-up special, Strange Times. Uh, I've seen his previous specials. I, they were all pretty good. I'm a fan of his comedy. Um, you can usually expect a lot of social commentary, maybe a couple personal stories, but I'm looking forward to that one. Then on Friday the 5th, there's Private Life, which is from writer-director Tamara Jenkins, who did The Slums of Beverly Hills, Savages, and she also wrote the uh, Juliet Naked, which came out earlier this year. This one is about a couple, uh, Richard and Rachel, who are played by Paul Giamatti and Catherine Hahn. It's a very interesting pairing. I, I love it already. Uh, it's about a couple who, th who uh, goes through the throes of inf infertility. <laughs> I can't fucking talk today. Uh, it's a couple who's, you know, having issues with infertility. They try to maintain their marriage and they uh, just go deeper and deeper into this weird world of assisted reproduction and domestic adoption. And a doctor suggests that a third party reproduce and they, they you know, they, they kind of struggle with that. And then a young woman reenters their life and they reconsider. So this one appears to be coming from like an honest place. And I like the pairing of Giamatti and Han, um, two people that I've 
pretty sure never work together, but I don't know. It's just a bizarre pairing. It's not your typical romantic couple or, you know, dramatic couple that you would see in a movie. So I'm excited for that. Um, if you don't like stuff like this, where it's like a realistic take on these type of situations where the characters act like real people, um, then I guess go watch baby mama or some shit. I don't know what to tell you over on HBO go. There's a interesting documentary called student athlete coming out on October 5th from the producers, Maverick Carter, Steve Stout, whoever the fuck that is. And LeBron James, same people that did that barbershop show. This is a HBO sports presentation and HBO has a good reputation for these documentaries. I've already checked out the Robin Williams one, which I liked uh, the Andre, the giant one this year, which I loved. And I still want to see the Gary Shandling one. So um, I think this one's worth mentioning if the subject interests you and student athlete is going to be about the revealing the exploitative world of high revenue college sports. Um, a hot topic if you are a sports fan that uh, hasn't really been covered to this level yet. So I may check that one out. Finally, the last but not least, and probably the one I'm most excited for out of anything I've talked about so far, is The Flight of the Concords live in London on HBO Go Saturday, October 6th. Um, this special features one of the biggest bands from New Zealand, New Zealand, perhaps you heard of them, performing live at the London Apollo. This one warms my soul. I fucking love this trailer. I had a big smile on my face during the entire trailer, which made me laugh three or four times in just over a minute. This is going to be fun. Okay, up next, now in theaters. So there are three films that i don't know if they're worth watching but i think they're worth talking about that come out friday october 5th first is going to be venom and look i get it i'm i'm watching the same shit you guys are watching but i don't know i kind of feel like the marketing is genius in a way because they just keep showing us this train wreck from all these different angles and just today i'm reading an article about how tom hardy said they removed not his favorite scene, not his favorite two scenes, but his favorite 30 or 40 minutes from the film. So uh, Matt Singer and others are demanding the Tom Hardy cut. And I, I just want to know, I mean, this could be a great DVD release, but I'm morbidly curious about this one. I have to fucking see Venom and check out which may be Tom Hardy's worst movie. But I, I think this is going to be one of those films that's more fun to talk about than actually watch. But you got to do one to do the other. Also out um, this Friday is going to be A Star is Born, starring Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, a trailer that I feel like I've seen unwillingly three dozen times. Um, and I can close my eyes and picture that fucking scene where Bradley Cooper's like, I just want to get another look at you. I was confused. I, I am, you know, there's a blind spot in my film history. I didn't realize this is a major story that's been remade four times. Uh, when I first saw this trailer, I thought it was like an Eddie Vedder documentary. <laughs> this one's just not for me. I'm sure it's going to make a shit ton of money. It's probably going to get nominated and win a shit ton of awards. And that's cool. If this is your thing, you guys enjoy it. I'm going to sit that one out. Um, also, another one I'm going to sit out is The Hate You Give. I, I hope, you know, I, I like the subject matter. It's about, you know, police brutality and, you know, a pol the police taking the young life of this African-American boy. It just looks so after school special and just so generic to me. Like, I, I hope someone covers this in a way that I'm interested in. And I hope this movie's good. I'm not rooting against it. It just came off as like really generic to me and the acting didn't seem that good. Maybe I'm an asshole. I don't know. You tell me. But um, <laughs> if I got to pick one this week, it's Venom because I know that it's going to be shitty, but I also know I'm going to have a lot of fun talking about it and I'm going to convince somebody to watch it so we can talk about it together on next week's episode. Or maybe I don't and I just talk about it all by myself. You have to find out. All right, it's the final solo segment before I'm joined by my guest. So you'll actually get to hear another voice hang in there. I know it's probably terrible. I'm definitely, definitely struggling to do this by myself, but I think I'll get better at it. So let's see. Um, it's been a while. So 
unfortunately, I did slow down a little bit. I feel like August was an awful month for theatrical releases and streaming. There was just a lot of not nothing to watch. Um, but I did check out The Black Klansman. I thought it was excellent. Um, a lot of fun. Hilarious. Heartbreaking at times. Uh, I didn't need all the winks and nods and nudges about how this story is ridiculous because these things still go on. Uh, I also feel like a lot of this stuff, a lot of the story like lacked logic, especially when it was like just the cops and robbers of it all. It just didn't make full sense, but I was able to like look past that because it was funny social commentary. I, I, it's just something you should check out. So if it's still in your theaters, give it a shot at Spike Lee surprise me because i haven't been interested in a spike lee movie i don't think most of us have been interested in spike lee in some time just kind of know him as that guy that sits on the the <laughs> on the court and Knicks games but he fucking made a really good movie um as you guys may know i have a canopy subscription membership and you should too it just it's a streaming service that is synced up with your local library and you get to watch all kinds of classic films and documentaries and they have a lot of criterion collection stuff so i try to um you know once a week watch a classic movie i checked out the 400 blows from 1959 it was fantastic this movie is about a young boy who's left without attention his parents don't give a shit about him he dives into a life of petty crime it's one of the best movies i've ever seen So the 400 blows, I highly recommend that it's black and white. You're going to have to read subtitles, but it's well, well worth it. I uh, watched the other F word also on canopy. This is a documentary about punk rock musicians and them becoming parents and growing up. I thought this was really good. I have to admit you probably need some interest in the band's to you know get anything out of this one you know to be interested in it but uh you know if you like people on fat wreck or you know just like punk rock people in general there's a lot of faces i can't remember them right now but i thought it was a really interesting look at how these people raise their kids and it's definitely non-traditional in most cases and the struggle between touring or you know balancing a job and touring and raising a family was really interesting so check that one out if you have canopy if you don't have canopy it's free fucking get it up next crazy rich asians was this movie basically just a live action fairy tale yes was it silly and stupid yes it was did i have a great time with it yes i did i laughed at least a half dozen times i was interested in the story there was a lot of great actors that i recognized and even more that i was introduced to so i thought it was a lot of fun if you have any interest in it go check it out i don't think it's a film that i'm going to rewatch ever i checked out summer of 84 on amazon prime um i dug it I, i i really did i thought they captured the look and feel of an 80s horror movie i i think unknown actors to me anyway that played the children they weren't the greatest actors in the world but they all felt like kids from the 80s and most importantly richard rich sommer known for mad men and everyone's ex-boyfriend in all the netflix original series he did a good job he was convincing as this uh, police officer who may or may not be a serial killer finally and yes these are quicker reviews than we're used to there's just so many of them i wanted to play catch up and i will go in deeper with this one at some point the endless finally caught this one this again i'm so frustrated with the movie theaters around me they don't play any good shit like this but fucking daddy's home 2 will be playing for a month and a half the endless which is about two children who escape a ufo death cult now adult brothers seek answers by going back to the cult and uh yeah man i love the visual effects in this one I just love stuff like this. The trailer was such a good tease. You you knew something fucked up was going on and you knew it was going to have a creepy feel. You just had no idea what what you're in store for. I I thought the visual effects they used in this was great. Um, All the actors did a really good job and I'm interested to see what Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead have up next. They're definitely on my list of directors to check out um i really liked 
Spring, which was produced by Justin Benson. That was like a cool vampire movie starring uh, my boy Lou Taylor Pucci. So uh, two for two for him. And I had to buy and list. I don't like to buy a lot of movies. You'll find out um, in our next segment with our guest that uh, maybe the newest way we're going to review films is the dollar value. I pay $12 for the endless happy purchase Blu-ray $12, no digital copy. So I only have the disc, but this is one I'm going to rewatch a quite a few times this year. Um, can't recommend it enough. One of my top 10 films of the year. So check out the endless it's streaming pretty much everywhere. Um, but if you have to, if the, you've checked out the trailer and you're convinced like me that this is something cool, it's worth renting. I, I would say it's worth buying even. I don't want to tell people how to spend their money, but if you like these kind of movies, it's worth your money. And on to the final segment of the show, which is an interview with our guest, Josh Blacker. Josh and I worked a couple years at Blockbuster together, and we shared the taste for strange and interesting movies. So... I uh, sat down with Josh and had a open conversation on, and this one's going to be a little more loose and open than our typical segments that you've, you know, come accustomed to. If you've listened to previous episodes or you can look forward to in future ones, um, you know, inside baseball here, I tried three times to master the art of recording phone conversations online. And Josh was a saint. He was patient as I stumbled through these methods that just did not work out. And finally, around midnight on Saturday, we got to record this conversation about the new art house horror movie, Mandy, starring Nicolas Cage, and the uh, theatrical release, The Predator, which is Shane Black's entry in the Predator series. So uh, give it a listen and enjoy. All right, I'm here with Josh Blacker. Um, Josh, what's your credentials? What, how can you talk about movies? Uh, I worked alongside in the battle uh, the trenches of Blockbuster for many years, and uh, you know, dealt with uh, pretty much seeing uh, five free rentals a week every week, uh, along with frank uh, recommendations. So um, I feel like I'm well qualified. I've seen just about everything, and uh, you know. I feel pretty well versed, so uh, you know, quiz me. I, I like the I've seen just about everything, and I think it's going to lead into the Predator because one of the complaints I've heard before I saw this movie, which almost deterred me from seeing the Predator, was people are like, "It's the worst movie," and I I, I liked it. I'll get out in front and say that. I know you said you kind of liked it. Yeah, I got no qualms with it. Yeah. I mean, did it, if you saw Alien vs. Predator, Requiem, or any of those terrible movies, and you thought that this was bad, that's just, you know. Exactly. Or if you saw, like, more than two dozen movies this year, whenever people say this movie, like, oh, this is such a shitty movie, you haven't seen enough bad movies, I, I get upset. Because I don't do the five free rentals anymore, because I don't work at a video store. They don't mm. exist, unfortunately. But mm. I had the movie pass in the beginning of the year, yeah. and... I just like going to movies, so I watched everything. I'm talking Daddy's Home 2, everything. Ah. Yeah, so I watched some shit. So I just feel like <laughs> I might not know much, but I know how shitty movies can be. Look, it had a really solid cast uh, and lots of good callbacks. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I felt like it was a little rushed at points, but for the most part, I felt like all these great people show up. Uh, Jake Busey shows up, you know, because Gary Busey was in the second one, and uh, I, it, it was back on Earth and stuff. Because as you know, Adrian Brody brought it on the alien planet, and then I kind of all, forgot about that one, which also I lo- enjoyed again. I had great characters. Uh, it was basically again try to call back to the original of like guys just lost and have no idea what's going on danny trejo uh topher grace is in that a lot of people yeah that's predators right they get real confused yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So. which again also but that was the most misleading part of that movie they put in the trailer they put like 15 predator little triangle dot things at adrian brody turns out to just be one it was full of shit there were multiple predators but the it was very misleading yeah, they do that sometimes. It's like, why not just make that movie you're trying to advertise? Um, but we won't spoil this one. We can spoil Predators because if you haven't seen that by now, you probably don't care that much about it. Um, yeah, for me, I thought if this movie was all over the place. Um, kind of in a good way, though. Like, my complaint 
with these ridiculous movies is that they get they're boring like they don't go ridiculous enough definitely not a problem with the predator like it wants to be three different movies and it does a pretty good job in parts of being all three movies um i laughed out loud a bunch i think the Hmm. the funniest scene was the fucking kid with the predator mask oh my god like throw something at him like hey kid fuck you uh fucking oh god that kid uh oh and uh, and again with with the kid uh weird interesting little side plot storyline that you just follow this little you know kid that has some mental issues around but uh i mean i felt like those two kids were real dicks and really surprising to recognize his stature in among 500 other kids out on halloween evening yeah they were just like hey you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i guess when you're if you're going to be a bully you got to have that talent but yeah there's like a a message i guess which is new for the predator series where like people with mental health issues have super pa- special powers because you have jacob trembley playing uh was it rory mckenna who was the son of i guess the main character quinn yeah 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 i guess that maybe that's a joel reference that kid was yeah um but you know he's got he's on the spectrum yeah. we'll say and I felt like kind of icky about it. And I've heard a couple other people who happen to review movies and also work in like the mental health industry and they were all offended. So offended. Yeah. They were offended. Like they, they, I don't know. I thought, how dare you put somebody with a disability in a movie or yeah? so there's like that side of it. Like, yeah, it's representation, but it's like, is it misleading? I don't know. I, I kind of was on the side of, well, you know, they have someone to look up to, but I don't understand what the message was supposed to be. Cause in addition to him, you have like, this ragtag group which is like i don't like the neutered version of the predator guys like there it definitely knew, wasn't well, like it was arnold the, and the summarized version of like <laughs> those guys and they just get into it and uh still an awesome group uh that one of the other reasons i wanted to see it keegan michael key showing up in fucking predator i was like yes did you hear the line in the uh, trailers that we can talk about that yeah, go ahead. Uh, he's, uh, you know, hey, uh, he says, uh, your uh, if your mother's pussy was a video game, it'd be rated E for everyone. And I was like, I got to see this movie just for that line. It's a really solid line. <laughs> it's so good. I was like, damn it. Oh, that, God. that roped you so, in. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, like I enjoyed it. And I thought it had the Shane Black sense of humor. There was some really good gore when you could see the Predator the like the visual effects version of it and especially like the uh the first predator i don't want to get too deep into it but right uh, but the, uh, and just in that though they did spoil yeah. the movie a little bit and i felt again they could, could have been a good secret there they re- they tell you that there's a super predator yeah. there's a bigger predator it's all in the trailer like if Shout that was out to it, hillary clinton yeah su- super predator yeah. <laughs> it's a reference some people will get it okay uh yeah no it just felt like another good plot line that they could have left in the movie and we would have been surprised halfway through the movie where super predator shows up felt yeah. kind of ripped so i mean anyone listening now knows like you don't listen to the podcast yet and that's okay josh but my number one complaint because a segment i did earlier in this podcast is i look at trailers and they show way too much and I, too there's, much. there's articles about this like you know the stupid we have to cater to the millennials like they don't have an attention span like these things are not real things but um they feel like they have to show like the entire movie to get someone to come out and see it and it's a disservice like i just uh finished hold um hold the dark which is a netflix original and that trailer makes you think this movie's about jeffrey wright chasing some wolves and it's about everything but that and I think that's cool. I like when things surprise us. Similar to the, what else is that? Michael Pena Extinction movie. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you watched that yet, but it was just, you know, led in a completely different direction when you watch the movie than what was advertised. And that's, you know, that's the point. Like, a trailer's just supposed to intrigue you of saying, I want to go, just, you know, drive in my car and go see something that, you know, seemed intriguing. There were, like, three maybe visual scenes. You were like, holy shit, like Inception or something. Mm-hmm. And they just spoil. Yeah, no, same, same deal. I agree. Uh, way too much is ruined. So, I mean, I think mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting much. I mean, the movie was getting dragged for a week and a half before I saw it, but I was entertained. Like that's what I expect. I don't these predator movies. I don't hold in high regard, and I was kind of going through 
the motions after uh, seeing this movie on uh, last Friday. I couldn't find anything. I, I'll, I'll scroll through like the streaming services and I'm like get anxiety about trying to find a fucking movie. So I was like, I'm just going to watch Predator and it was on HBO Go. And I was like, oh, oh, really? You can like already watch it? Like, no, the first one, like the Arnold one. Ah, oh, okay. And I was like, okay, this movie's okay. I, it's mostly nostalgia. Like the Predator, you remember the good lines, you know. Uh, Jesse Ventura. Yeah, sexual Tyrannosaurus. And like, you know, you, you know the fucking meme of the, the hand grip handshake between uh, um, Arnold and what's his face from, uh, he was in Arrested Development too. But um, uh, it's like a collection of scenes and. It's it's a pretty good movie. That one's kind of like Jaws in the Jungle, but Predator Two is fucking dog shit, dude. It's so fucking wait, bad. You, wait, wait, Danny Glover? Yeah, I love Predator Two. I'm not saying <laughs> I didn't enjoy it, but it's a bad movie. Like it's it's set in a futuristic time that doesn't exist, and uh, but look. Like, it's basically Murtaugh, and he's getting too old for this shit with a predator. And to me, that's a great engine. And fucking <laughs> Gary Busey's just insane. And he's, you know, I, I felt like, yeah, maybe the overall spectrum of the movie, not amazing. But I felt like they killed their roles, and they made me want to watch that fucking battle between, like, Danny Glover was like, this fucking alien, I've had enough of his shit. Yeah, it's like definitely like they're trying to, like, it's the it's the post Die Hard thing where it's like, um, oh, you know, a, a New York cop, or in this case, an LAPD cop, he can fucking take down a predator. Even though in the previous movie, six Navy SEALs couldn't take do the job, but fucking Danny Glover could. Look, but that also okay. But again, the first the first movie set the worst fucking expectations for every other fucking movie, and even for this one, yeah, like, good. You make I always have an issue with like uh, the these the the main characters get picked up and thrown by Predator all the time. I'm like Predator, just rip them in half like you did everyone else. It's- oh yeah, back to the Shane Black one. Yeah, certain people he did not want to kill. I thought that was pretty weird. <laughs> Yeah, he was well. Uh, well, that, so I mean, we can't get too much into it, but you know, he's there, and he has some like ulterior motives and stuff like that, um, which again makes us the fucking assholes again. Um, but then he's totally cool with just murdering a whole bunch of people right off the bat. Like he's like, I'm awake, rah, you know, I'm gonna murder these people. And uh, props to idiot doctor who puts his hands next to a predator's face. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> That was, um, that was the best scene, like, um, <laughs> the, when the Predator's, like, just freaking out in the lab. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. It was, it was, that was, it was so badass. Sad. That kind of set, like, the tones shift so much in a movie, and that kind of set me up for excitement. And I wasn't, like, disappointed throughout the movie. Like, again, I, I felt entertained throughout. Um, I thought there was, like, some weird, like, the way they like handled Olivia Munn's like sexuality in the movie. Like she was, you know, she had like the strip down in the, the, the scene where they have to like be, um, yeah, uh, the, you know, uh, contaminated, yeah, for, decontaminated. To, yeah. So she's like, you know, nude and the, and the predators running around. And then there was that scene where like he, she gets thrown on the bike, like reverse cowgirl yeah, rever- or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Rever- uh, rever- no, just yeah. cowgirl. That's, I think that's just regular yeah. cowgirl. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. she, she was thrown on the bike standard cowgirl. And I was like, this is like kind of goofy PG 13, like s- sexuality going on there. And then the weird, like uh hotel scene with her. Um, I, I guess like, I, I know I'm like supposed to hate Olivia Munn. I thought she was okay. I, like, I don't. So I feel like you got a lot of previous people telling you things like no, no, I went no, into this I'm, movie with no expectations. You know how, and like, no one said shit. Yeah. But and uh, people, who's saying Olivia Munn's a bitch? Or <laughs> but yeah, don't you understand? People do hate her. She has Why? a lot of hate. I don't know. Why? I don't, I don't see her in enough things, and I'm not like I, I mean to me the whole cast was just very like peculiar to me and in, in their selection like they're pulled everything. out of a hat. <laughs> yeah, it was just very like, and I was like, that's cool. Uh, you know, hey, maybe that's what this movie needs is just a really weird ragtag group of people um, for a fun time. Which, and again, uh, you know, I had probably just as much fun, and and my biggest complaints, I just felt like it was a little rushed in the in the second. You you know, uh, in the second half of the movie, but uh, I felt like great build up, uh, got a couple of good callbacks, um, a waste of a lot of great built up characters. Um, and uh, also, it's like it, we're going to have to talk about the one guy that had the uh, he was wearing the gun. I don't really want to give away the guy, but he ends up blowing his own head off. 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I just felt like that was really like you keep building up these characters and then just taking people out that way. Uh, and also, I didn't give it. I had to go back and figure it out because it was so didn't make sense at the time. Like, I get it. Like, I guess where he looks, the thing is, I don't know. Yeah, if you're trying to find logic and reason in the Predator movie, like, you, you just don't go in. Go, don't go in with that. Um, no. I thought it was very romantic, the Thomas Jane and uh, Key Mike and Oh, Keel God. Scene. It was You know best. what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, it was, like, well, everything with both of them. And that was the thing. You had all, you have fucking, you got the, like, the Punisher in the back, and you've got fucking, you know, and you've got Key there, fucking, these just really weird characters and thrown in the box. I don't know. I loved it. I was a big fan. I feel like, yeah, I enjoyed it. Like it was had a, uh, I think all these predator movies have a different feel to them. Like I said, um, the first, the original one, it's kind of like a going for a jaws in the jungle predator two is like just a diehard movie with throwing yeah, like, some sci-fi right, in there. Sure. And with this one, it's kind of like a midnight movie. It was going for like a grindhouse type of movie. Like, I feel like it would have been more well received without the predator name attached to it. People would have liked it, like the long lines of like you know dog soldiers or something like that. Like, oh, you gotta check out this badass horror movie by Shane Black. But like, people were just ready to hate it because it's a remake or a continuation. Of Re- it, I don't know. know but you, I don't know the yeah. classification of reboot or remake, but uh, it's, it's 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 look. <laughs> It's People a sequel, though. Hate. It is, because like yeah. they, they follow the timeline, and like you said, um, right, they with did. Jake Busey. He's obviously the son of Gary Busey's character in Predator 2. They have the same last name. Yeah, no, they definitely... I mean, they followed that. They talk about you know the previous occurrences. The fact that they had as much information as they did was kind of weird. Uh, it just seemed like they had more knowledge than I thought they would. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, the the whole thing with the little kid being, you know, the next step in the evolutionary chain, I thought that was a little like, well, yeah, but you can also rip his arms off really easy. So, you know, how tough, you know, it's. Yeah. He's a, what he's exactly a professor do you guys X. Want? He's a Professor X character type thing. Right. You yeah. Know, I mean, he's, I, he's, I saw that coming where he was like, oh, McKenna is the only true oh, warrior sure. here. And I was like, oh, it's the kid. Yeah. No, yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, you know. Spoiler's that. Uh, um, Real she was quick, badass. Like I said, I'm neutral on Olivia Men- Munn, but I feel like she just got those teeth. Did you know she like seems like she's talking through her teeth? That that kind of like irked me. As somebody that's had teeth work done, I can say uh, I did not recognize anything of twos to me. But then again, I was also in the moment. I think of yeah. the movie, I was pretty in it. I, like I was pretty in when we decided to go. So I was, uh, you know, she just like talks uh, through her teeth. Her teeth are always out. Like she's just like. I wish we had video right now, but like you could see her, her top and bottom teeth the entire time she talks, which could just be, you know, the way she is. It could be her thing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like, again, I like, I, I really, I don't know what the, all that for, to everyone who hates Olivia Munn, you know, what's your yeah. problem, man? Maybe she's, it was a direction. Pretty thing. lady. Yeah. Cause Sterling K. Uh, Brown is like chewing that Nicorette gum the entire fucking movie. So maybe the director was like, I want teeth. Everybody show their teeth in this movie. Do it. Show them. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe Shane Black's a teeth guy like Tarantino is a foot guy. He's like just Olivia, just hop that lip up a little bit higher, sweetie. Yeah, like that scene where everybody was brushing their teeth together. I didn't know why that was there. Yeah, there, there's probably a good waste of uh, a few <laughs> uh, random scenes. My favorite is like, uh, he's, okay, so the space dogs. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, and I don't know. I just the spa- okay. So there's there's space dogs. They show up. Um, they look like little miniature Whoopi Goldbergs with on four legs, and that was also a great line in the movie where he says, "Like it's like an alien Whoopi Goldberg." Yeah, I mean, and I was like, "That's exactly correct," because that's what I have always said. I kind of, I also ignored that they wear the predator wears fishnets until my girlfriend pointed out, and I can't mm. unsee it. Well, it's because he shops at Hot Topic. Yeah, she's like, she's like, I can't take them seriously. They wear fishnets. I was like, fuck. I just, yeah, it's always been there, but I didn't focus on it. I, I knew it was there, but I didn't focus Maybe on it. Maybe it's the tendon of their enemies wrapped up in something. It's there for a reason. Yeah, no. Because it, 1980s, it, they didn't have enough special effects. They just threw together whatever they could. Yeah, yeah and I, kudos to them for all the, you know, live action work with all that, too. That Most mm-hmm. of that looked real. Like, it didn't look like they were using as much CGI stuff as you would, you know, up for words of spaceship. But 
Yeah. yeah, I thought it looked cool. Um, so yeah, like in summary, I think it's like a good like midnight movie, like a dumb grindhouse type movie. It's just with a licensed product that you're all very familiar with, but maybe we shouldn't hold so near and dear to our hearts because if we're being honest with each other, these movies were never like great. It's Predator. It's not first yeah. come. It's supposed to be dumb and fun. Yeah. All right. It's supposed to be everyone goes out on Friday night and goes and sees a movie or, you know, it's date night and you want to watch something and it turns out it's the guy's choice this night. Yeah. You know, it's a bunch um, of one liners and, and some spine rippage. Exactly. One liners and spine rippage. All right. The next movie we're going to talk about is uh, Mandy. It's 2018. <laughs> I guess you could call it a horror movie. Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Um, so are you a fan of Nicolas Cage's recent work? I feel like we both were kind of into him when we worked at the Blockbuster. Because um, okay. uh, Bad Lieutenant came out, I believe, around that time, towards the end of the Blockbuster era for us. Mm, yeah, sure. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. Uh, I would say not as big of a fan, but, you know, still will invest time into Nicolas Cage if the recommendation comes along. Because there, again, there's a huge selection nowadays. There's just, they keep keep pumps them out like fucking Seagal. Yeah. Now, I've I've definitely seen more highlights on YouTube than the direct to red box movies in the past five years of Nicolas Cage. So, you know, I don't have like a DVD collection of all of his works or anything. No, but this is at theaters, right? Yeah, this is in theaters now. Um, unfortunately, I had to watch it at home. You did the same, right? Because oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would not. To be fair, I would not have paid to see this movie. Okay, um, I th- I don't know. I would like to see it in theaters. So really, I think something like this would be fun to watch with a crowd. I'm a fan oh, yeah. of the yeah yeah. I like the art house uh, horror movies. So I I, I like this. I thought it was really interesting. I think um, you might be turned off with like the style choices, like maybe the music, maybe the the color palette is too much for some people. But I feel like you got to do that nowadays to separate yourself because horror movies look too pretty. That like they're too clean. They 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 all look the same. Right, the kids are so hot, like kind of thing. Yeah, they all look the same. And if you look at what's being done with Mandy, and then go back, and I'm not saying this movie is any kind but of. But is like, this a post- horror movie? I don't know. It's like a two hour like metal video. It's, it's almost as grindhouse <laughs> as you would consider Predator to an extent. Yeah, like, I think they're a good pairing. I, I think that I would watch Mandy first because it's a little more of a slow burn where uh, Predator is like just throwing shit in a blender. Yeah. With spines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, me and Mandy. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to like, I did not enjoy the movie i just felt like nicholas cage was still playing nicholas cage like they did nothing to change nicholas cage you're like nick just stand there you got your bottle cool now say this um <laughs> just some of his lines you know don't be negative it just sounded like something that came out of like snake eyes or con air or every other nicholas cage movie i've ever fucking seen uh, maybe not con air but uh because he was more southern um See, I thought I disagree. I thought he uh, he really well. The movie holds him back. Like it's just you know he's there, and you know you've seen if you've seen the trailer, you know he's going to be like covered in blood and screaming um, at some point. But it's got like a nice slow burn to it. I thought it was like it kind of like the movie like like a trance going on with the color and the rhythm of it in the beginning oh you could definitely watch this on acid for sure yeah i i don't think i mean you can watch it sober but it's probably not the preferable way to to enjoy mandy but i'm just saying visually it was yeah. like had a lot of great visual features like i will uh, like um, again artistically nothing against this movie i think it definitely pushed the envelopes um I, I, I do think the the weirdest thing was I feel like, you know, they're, whoever was like the casting director was like, let's just find everyone that looks like a sex offender and put them in this movie. <laughs> they like, I feel like they like actually they can measure like the depths of their eye sockets and because everyone had like the real deep eye socket look. You know what I'm talking about? All deep eye sockets, yeah. dark pupils, uh, <laughs> receding hairlines, creepy fucking faces, smile, dibbles, I, I fucking like- just... The every ca- person the casting director like brought in a group of like six people all greasy and he's like no deeper i want the eye sockets deeper you say have you guys ever seen celebrity deathmatch 
I want him to look like yeah. that. I want to pour a four <laughs> ounce, four ounce beverage in those eye sockets. Okay. And yeah, just, Andrea Risenborough, she plays Mandy. Yeah. She just had, she had a look, she had a distinct look. She looked interesting. It's like the, just like the movie. Everyone. Again, was that, that was like Casper looked, the ghost. Like if you gave it hair. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was, uh, real real interesting character i don't know i liked the uh the, what were they the sons of, of uh, uh the anarchist uh the satanism you know uh it was the okay. children of of tomorrow of future dawn or something i've only seen this one I'm yes gonna, i'm yeah, gonna rewatch yeah. this movie of, you know children of something dawn yep yeah. okay so evil satanic club yeah in their um, band. mind you i did like mandy mandy was badass uh-huh hmm I just loved her reactions uh, in circumstance. So, I mean, general plot, uh, I mean, and I, so that was a different thing. I read like three different synopsis of this movie after the fact to see what was put out there and how they were putting it out there. Cause some of them weren't as detailed, you know, one that read Miller is in, you know, uh, uh-huh. doesn't give a lot of detail. Um, one of them did, did push it a little bit further, but for the most part, you don't go in there knowing a lot. It's interesting you say that because my immediate reaction after the movie was like, I need to watch this again. I need to watch it again. I, I it's I think it's very rewatchable. So I bought it instead of rented it instead of renting it. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to check it out again. It's it's something and maybe I should try different drugs each time I watch it or just be in a different mood. Like I, I feel like it's something you got to be locked in on to. You could eat shrooms and do and watch that yeah. movie. And that, another terrifying thing when like they, like the the camera changes between like faces and shit like halfway. One, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. That would that shit yeah, that that was pretty trippy. Like, but yeah, I, I'm. If you like weird stuff, and here's the thing: like, if you complain like I that everything's the same, like you know, I have to mm-hmm. applaud something like this that is unlike anything else. Like you couldn't compare it to anything. Like. This is what Rob Zombie should have been doing. Like this movie is a throwback to like eighties and seventies horror movies, but it's completely oh, it's unique. Just, yeah, like yeah. what well, I don't, I can't even. There might be something that I haven't heard of that is an inspiration for this movie. But you can tell some dude just like listen to metal um, and <laughs> watch some shitload of horror movies, and it's like I'm gonna make my own fucking tale. Oh, it definitely also had kind of like an Evil Dead feel to it, you know. Well, like uh, customized yeah. weapon. Okay, so yeah, yeah, right. you gotta have well, your dude own. in the woods. Fucking bad shit happens to his girl, you know, uh, and he's you know looking to fight that kind of thing. Not, I mean, not if anything darker than fucking Evil Dead. Yeah. But that was another thing. Who? So this guy, they, you know, she was a some type of artist, writer, or something, crea- uh, creative. She read a lot of paperbacks. Okay, and he was uh, he worked at the um, the contracting thing that there the, the you know he worked the yeah, lumberyard yeah, whatever he's a, he a lumberjack which like right. I wasn't really I pay attention to rewatch the beginning because he's like picked up like they drop him off in a remote area right. and they pick him right. up right I yeah. did re- yeah I, and I and I again I agree rewatchable I went like first I read I wanted to understand it a little bit more uh-huh. like that was more I like and if, that's why I went and read a little bit more but. Um, yeah, that like the fact that he was able to just forge his own battle axe. Uh, that's impressive. It's impressive. I didn't think he was capable of that in that short amount of time. Well, yeah, I think what was waiting for him. There was that dude in the trailer, or whatever. It's like it's been waiting for you. Like no, no, no. That was the crossbow. So he forged a battle axe. Okay, man, I the crossbow that. was so the crossbow uh-huh. was his first weapon, the Reaper, whatever. And he says, you know, he says, you know, I can give you some arrows. And to call back to that fucking dude in like every awesome movie and creep fucking uh, asshole. He's in Predator. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He was in the first Predator. That's yeah. right. He was the shh guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so if, no, first he got the crossbow and now, and then after that shit, and again, you're talking about Bill Duke, by the way, shout out to Bill Duke. Okay. Bill Duke, you're the man, you know, recessed eyes, OG number one. Um, yeah, he, it, not, he, he, not deep eye sockets, but bulge, yeah. like, I don't, you know, and I think they're deep and they bulge. Like, it's <laughs> like kind of like the Pee Wee Herman in the dark character when they like bulged and shit. Give me Nicolas Cage and the weirdest eyes that we can get for, for scale. <laughs> so good. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, fucking no, he forged that battle axe later at a later point, but, uh, also disappointed in the motorcycle cult group, not, you know, I thought you should be more badass if you look like Hellraiser. Like the goblin people, the, like the right, ghoulish right. guys. Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. Were they, 
uh, see, I don't want to get too much into it. I was just I like, know, it's like, uh, I, I was like, I can't picture them going to the gas station to gas up those things. Are they powered by evil, was, by blood? Are they blood? Fuel? Right. No, well, so, and then that was something they gave a little bit more information in a synopsis about like what the shit is they're drinking and shit like that and what they're all about and their, 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 their deal. But, um, yeah, no. So, uh, they decided to, uh, they said it was like an LSD kind of thing that they were drinking something. Okay. It makes sense. Cause they did, uh, do like a drop of some hallucinogen into Mandy's eyeballs and cause they probably figured deep eye sockets, like this is the quickest way the drug's going to get to her. God, well, man, and all she had to do was keep her fucking head down one day, right? Like, <laughs> it's like, like, come on, you know, why would you stare at the creepy guy on the bus? Yeah, don't don't look up. <laughs> yeah, just you know, I am connected to you. Look at my penis. Um, yeah, that guy. Hey, do you like the Carpenters? This is even better, uh, ladies, <laughs> gentlemen. If anyone asks you. If you like the carpenters, you get the fuck out of that room. Run! You go as fast as you can. Run! And even if they don't mention the carpenters, if anyone pulls out a piece of their own music, be it acoustic guitar, vinyl record. Bale, American Psycho. We've all seen this going wrong yeah, before. It's head for Z Hills, okay? It, it never ends well. This is why I don't pull out records anymore. I have them. Best case, he kills you. Worst case, you're listening to his fucking music. Fucking, yes. <laughs> Worst case, you got to listen to two sides of that bitch. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I got to turn it over. Stop, stop. <laughs> Just kill me. Do not turn the record over. Just kill me. Um, the door is locked. So you seem like you're still figuring out how much how you feel about Mandy. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna yeah, recommend I'm, I'm it. Hesitant. I love it. I think for where I am, where I've, I've watched a lot of movies now. You've man. seen everything. So look, yeah. anything different to you that strikes your fancy is like a fucking super solid. Yeah. If you want something to surprise you to just, you know, if you just love things for being different, I, I think it's an interesting movie. I'm definitely going to check out the director's um, next movie. His name is Panos Cosmatos and his father worked on um, Tombstone and he worked on Tombstone. Hmm. Like his, uh, I think he the, he paid for this movie, Mandy. Fun piece of trivia with his father's. Oh, uh, you know who else uh, helped uh, fund this movie? Elijah Wood. Yeah, I and, did see that. Yeah, it's part of like some uh, studio too that's like crowdsourced. What did you think of the Cheddar Goblin? Cheddar Goblin. Yeah, the commercial, uh, like the, the macaroni and cheese commercial. Did you catch that? Go watch a YouTube video if you missed that. Mm. It's when Nicholas Cage come, he he walks back in the house. He's like looking at TV after you know what's happened has oh, happened. Oh right, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like this green goblin who's barfing like fucking macaroni and cheese on two kids <laughs> as and into the bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he, I don't know how you missed that. You must have been doing something. Uh, it's yeah. And it, well, again, so that was around the same point where I was looking at all the Chinese food containers that were all over the place, and I was like, who eats this much Chinese food, <laughs> and who delivered it there? And showed up and was like, you know, I'll keep the change. They had these guys, mind you, so when you meet this group, it's basically Hellraiser on meth, on cocaine and shit like that. And they're all fucking insane. But they have not, they love Chinese food, which also a hidden storyline. Um, yeah, no, I was so distracted by that that, uh, you know, I totally probably missed the mac and cheese commercial. Also, shout out to Chinese food in Maryland. I miss you. Oh, not not as good in Denver. Oh, it's fucking that's that, that also a very distracting thing. I'm like, oh yeah, no, it's not as good. Not as good. So, so if you see Chinese food in a movie, it's just gonna set you off in your head, and you just go into another place for a little bit. <sighs> Man, but they had so much though, <laughs> and that was the weird thing. So I'm like, look, you want to see like a Chinese food delivery guy, or like six of them strung up I in the back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to know either. Did they go pick it up? And if they did, what was the reaction of that guy? Yeah. Director's uh, cut person's delivering Chinese food. Hey, man, try to uh, show you want to walk. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll bring you your shitty chicken. Okay. Oh, fuck, man. You got fucking screws in your face, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, hey, it's 2018. That might be a little problematic what you did there. But Josh is part Asian. You don't know that. But I know that. To be fair, I'm Jewish, and my people <laughs> suffered more than any of your people. So. Oh my God. 
<laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, like director's cut scene, owner of the Chinese restaurant. Hey man, show up tomorrow. Unlike all those other guys who fucking quit on Friday, <laughs> and <laughs> cut to six Chinese food delivery guys fucking on on hooks hanging upside down. Have you down. seen Lei Mei or Zhang <laughs> Wang Jin Vin? Have you seen Te or Nan? <laughs> All right, Jerry Lewis, calm the fuck down. Um, <laughs> anyway. Love a good Chinese accent. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. Do you know anyone that does one? Uh, not me. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mine's more South Park oriented. Yeah, it's Mongolian. It's a little bit yeah, Mongolian. It's very Mongolian beef. Yeah. You can make fun of Mongolians. No one cares. They don't have a support group yet. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, so I'm going to recommend Mandy. I think it's it's just just a really cool just like badass way to describe it you can watch both these movies um back to back like i said I, i'm a thumbs up on predator just expect it to be what all the other predator movies are kind of dumb fun. yeah kind of yeah, dumb and fun. silly fun it, enjoyable it, com- it comes down to what a lot of movies come down to who's gonna live who's gonna die right yeah and super fun yeah. i would also recommend mandy uh if you're looking for something again i'm more of a financial person right. as you know so it's more like this is like a movie i'd spend five dollars on but i probably wouldn't spend 10 i like that ranking um, well we need to do that all right so predator how much would you spend on predator i would spend the full 11 dollars. i actually enjoyed it enough i did like now like if i got to judge it after seeing it i would have preferred to have spent eight okay so eight dollars predators eight dollars and but I would Mandy's spend five dollars predator because I did. I, I like this. We're gonna use this. Even when I have other people on, I like the dollar amount. Um, mm-hmm. Predator for me, I'm gonna say eight dollars, but I'm gonna say Mandy is like fifteen dollars because I'm gonna end because up rewatching. You're, you're all about that. Yeah, yeah. Super, yeah. So super weird. I, I like the dollar thing again. Still, well, you know, hey, man, that's what I'm here for. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, us Jews, we have ideas. <laughs> I, I already, I already trademarked it, so it's mine. Well, 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 I felt like I patented it first, so I'm going to edit this out. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Josh, uh, thanks for joining the podcast. Where you're going to hear from Josh soon. Um, where should people send their uh, hate mail? Where can they reach you on social media? Send their hate mail uh, over you your me, uh, your Mister Red on Twitter. Mister What Ed? Mister Red R E D. Okay, I think maybe. Who knows? Someone if you can't that find email. me, that's probably better. So yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, and do you want to have any uh, promotions? I know you were you've been pitching Uts white cheddar popcorn. Uh, yeah, if you're not having a futz, you're not eating Uts. And uh, where can you find Uts white cheddar popcorn? Uh, you can find Uts in your local Safeway Giant and or Walmart locations. Where other wherever great snacks are sold. Wherever great snacks are sold, all the bad snacks are sold at Safeway. <laughs> all right. All right, man. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you soon. Guten Tag. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that's it for the show. Thanks for listening. Um, if you could like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, rate and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to the podcast, tell your friends. And again, thanks. Thanks for your patience and understanding, and I'll see you next week.